So Sean is drinking a slushy as fast as he can. The amount of slushy left in the cup, which is in millimeters, as a function of time, which is in seconds, is graphed. So we've got the amount of slushy left in the cup. That's going to be this vertical axis here. And then our horizontal axis is time. So as time increases, Sean drinks his slushy. So there's going to be less and less in the cup. And so it looks like at zero seconds that the slushy has 600 millimeters. And then as time goes on, it decreases linearly because it's going down in a line. And it looks like by the time you reach 75 seconds that there's zero millimeters of slushy left. So now we can answer this question. How much slushy did Sean drink every five seconds? So after the first five seconds, we can see how much slushy is left. It looks to be about right here, which is not the cleanest value. It's hard to see exactly what that is. But it looks like at five seconds that there's about 500 and we'll say 60 millimeters remaining. So it looks like after five seconds that 40 millimeters were drank. So C is probably the answer, but we want to find probably a more distinct point here. So we already have this point here as a very distinct point. We know that at zero seconds, there are 600 millimeters of slushy left. So that's very clear to us. But let's go along our line and see if we can see where it might intersect this grid at a corner. So it looks like maybe right here. That looks to be right on the corner. And so that is at 12 and a half seconds. So we can say 12.5. And it looks like that we're at a value of 500 millimeters. So what we can do is figure out how much slushy Sean drank every second and then just multiply it by five. So it looks like he went down 100 millimeters of slushy in that 12.5 seconds. So you can take your 100 millimeters and divide it by 12.5 and that would give us eight millimeters per second. And so from here, we can just multiply it by five and what you get is that 40 millimeters, which is what we got when we interpret it with this kind of not so clean point right there. But it still works. And you really could just use that first piece of information because you can eliminate the 50. Because basically it came down to whether or not this dropped 40 milliliters or 50 milliliters in that five second span. But you can see that it didn't go down to 550. If it was down at 550, then you could argue it's 50. But since it's above, it's got to be less than that. And it's clearly not 8, because that's too small. So that leaves only this choice. It can't be D, because that's too big of a drop. So let's do another problem. In this one, we have Amir drove from Jerusalem to the lowest place on Earth, the Dead Sea. His altitude relative to sea level, which is in meters, so that's our vertical axis, as a function of time, which is in minutes, is graphed. So time is our horizontal axis. So it looks like this is zero seconds here. Let me change colors. So this is zero seconds and time increases. It looks like about 40 seconds in that Amir's altitude, that's our vertical axis here, that would be at zero. So as time increases, the altitude, which starts at 440 meters above sea level starts to decrease and it goes down in this linear fashion and it looks like by this would be 76 seconds that Amir would reach his lowest point which is somewhere around minus 400 meters below sea level. So we want to know how fast did Amir descend and what you may have noticed as I've gone through these problems is I like to really understand the graph before I even look at the question. Sometimes I'll look at the question first and that will kind of help my analysis. But ultimately, I try to just get a feeling for what's going on. I try to describe this graph in my own words. And basically what I said is that as time goes on, this altitude, which starts at 440 above sea level, goes down in this linear fashion. And after 76 seconds right there, it reaches its bottom of what looks to be almost minus 400. So that analysis just helps prepare you for the question. 
So that's what I would recommend when first looking at these. So how fast did he descend? So we're looking at meters per minute. So this, we are dealing with linear equations, but whenever they're asking for the speed of something, that's gonna be the slope of this line. Or whenever you have this kind of rate, some unit per some other unit, meters per minute, or meters per second, or miles per hour, anything like that where you have a rate, this is gonna be a slope type question. So the question becomes, how do we find the slope? And we know slope is defined as the rise over the run. And our rise is just how much do the y values change or how much does our altitude change? And then we'll divide it by how much we run, which is how much our time changes. So let me just pick two very distinct points and we'll use those. We'll say this one, this is at zero seconds and 440 meters put the units in and then this one right here looks to be at 40 seconds but it's zero meters so our rise it looks like we're going down 440 and then our run it looks like we're going over 40 so our slope here is going to be this minus 440 divided by 40 and we can cancel a zero out there and 44 divided by 4 is 11 so you get minus 11 meters per minute and the reason there's no negative number in the answer choices is that they're asking how fast did he descend we basically just figured out the slope of the line and it is negative but the fact that it is descending or amir is descending implies that it would be a negative slope so that's why it's not in the answers here but anyways we're going to use choice letter c here 